Hey YouTube, this is MindTech. Welcome back to another video. Today, a build of Windows 11 has leaked to the internet. And today, I'm going to be reviewing it. I spent a couple hours with a new operating system, and I have a lot of thoughts about it that I would love to share. I'm first going to share what I like, what I dislike, some of the technical observations I've discovered while using the new operating system, and also some of my thoughts that we might be able to see at the Microsoft event coming on the 24th of June. So without any further ado, let's begin. I know I was so excited when I first saw this and I just had to get it installed. Before you guys go and install it though, just make sure to note that it is not an official Microsoft build, so you might be clicking malicious links, you might not be downloading what you want to download, so do it at your own risk. But you know, while we have it, let's just have some fun and explore what is new about this. So obviously, like I just mentioned, the biggest thing are the UI overhauls, and it's a lot bigger than you'd actually think just based on the headlines that you've probably seen. The first thing I'm going to focus on is the new taskbar. We have brand new icons for the start menu, a brand new Windows logo also, a new task view button, and a new widgets interface. We also have brand new graphics whenever you hover over and look at icons in the taskbar. Now it is more rounded and it's also gray. And you can see all the apps that you have open with just a little dot and the active app with a line with your accent color. Instead of on Windows 10 where all apps have a big intrusive line and the active app is highlighted. So this honestly looks a lot cleaner on Windows 11. Now one element of the new taskbar icons that I'm a big fan of also is that it has a little progress indicator when you are transferring files or exporting video or anything that really has an application that needs to do progress. So if I were to let's say copy some of these folders from the install over to my desktop, once I initiate that, as you can see, there's a little transfer down there on the file explorer icon. It's, you know, very fluid. It just kind of pops in, pops out, just like the other animations of the operating system. We also have brand new animations for when you open, close, minimize, maximize, so on and so forth. So if I were to go on to Windows 10, when you maximize and minimize an application, it kind of has a wonky animation. And if I were to snap the app to a side of the screen, it doesn't really have a special animation for that. If I slow down the maximize, animation you can see it kind of glitches out to a position and then it slowly maximizes the rest of the way and if we slow down the minimize and you can see it doesn't really go to a particular area every single app that you have on your computer has the same exact animation which doesn't really look that fluent and isn't that clean so if I look on Windows 11 here the first thing you'll notice is that it minimizes to where the app is on the taskbar if I now bring settings up again and move the position on the taskbar it now minimizes is closer there and that just makes the applications feel a bit more responsive and as you can see also it's kind of bouncier whenever you maximize from the taskbar and if I were to maximize from this position as you can see they completed the animation when I slow that down it isn't glitchy at all it kind of just flows right together and it really feels a lot more polished I think I'm actually going to do just a quick demo to show you how the animations look here if I were to close this notepad window and save the changes to that kind of just disappears. That really pops up from the taskbar, really pops in. If I were to snap this to one side of the window, they have a new animation for that also. Also with the arrow snap, they do have a little animation there and they also have a brand new interface. If I were to hover over the maximize button, there are a lot of different new combinations that you can do. And if you click on one of these combinations, the app will automatically flow to that position. This honestly kind of resembles something that you'd see with Power Toys, where you can have all of these different combinations of apps. It's a lot more customizable as to where you can place it. Let's say if you're making it full screen so I can place a notepad right there. But I also like how Microsoft makes it a lot clearer exactly how your window is going to be snapping with that better animation compared to Windows 10 where it kind of just did an arrow glass thing. And also on Windows 10 you can snap things to the corner but you can't snap things in the middle. And finally if you notice I can arrow snap just by kind of going to the side. I don't actually have to flick it to the side of the screen like you did in Windows 10. I can just kind of glide this on over. You can see my mouse cursor isn't even on the side of the screen. You can see on Windows 10, I have to go all the way to the top. And sometimes even you have big errors like I'm having right now with Notepad. And also that snapping animation, as you can see, that's also kind of old. And it's honestly a lot more polished of an experience compared to what we had before. Now, moving back onto the taskbar, the next thing that you'll notice is the revamped settings page. And this page, honestly, 
obviously shares a lot of resemblance with Windows 10, but you still have that rounded UI and it also is not connected to the taskbar, so it honestly looks a lot more modern. They have a brand new interface here when you see the selected option, which really follows a lot more with the Fluent Design Scheme. And also on the side, it works properly with dark mode now, finally. I know I've had a lot of issues getting my desktop to work correctly as to this search interface actually being dark, which is something that does really annoy me. And one thing that I've also noticed is that this tends to not show you web results. Like let's say if I were to search Google on Windows 11, it gives you an option where you can search it in the browser, but it doesn't automatically do that for you. Whereas on Windows 10, if I were to search the same thing, it automatically pops right into Google, kind of gives you this outdated looking interface. And it also gives you a lot of different suggestions that aren't localized to your computer. So it doesn't really make sense why Windows is suggesting those. You don't have all the tabs. You also don't have your Microsoft account directly attached into this. So you don't see your points and your name and everything. It doesn't really give you a way if you're, let's say doing a presentation and trying to search something on your computer. It's just a simple search interface, simple search box. I think that this is a big step up. And also one thing that they've changed is the task view. You no longer have that timeline. They relocated that to the start menu, which is a place where I think a lot more people would logically look for apps that they had opened up previously. And the only thing that they really changed here was they made things rounded and they moved the desktop switcher over to the bottom instead of the top. So it's really just the same, but I still think that it looks clean. This is a really good way to show off the animations with the icons here. Even if I click that without releasing the mouse button, you can still see how the animation reacts and responds. And I can show you that with the widgets there. And I just love how it kind of flows together. If you look at Windows 10, they did have some things that changed when you hovered over them, but they didn't change when you clicked on them. And finally, of course, what everyone's talking about, the brand new start menu. Gone is the Metro UI, gone are live tiles. It's been completely revamped and I kind of have some mixed feelings about it. So at the top, you have apps that you can pin. You can no longer put them in folders. You can no longer have text subdivide them like you were able to do under Windows 10, but you can have additional pages of apps. So in theory, you could have basically an infinite start menu, kind of like what you have with an app switcher on iPhone, which I guess might be a good thing. You can rearrange the order of apps, but that's really about it. I think it looks cleaner because it doesn't have a background like it did with the live tiles, but I preferred being able to change the size of things, make things small, make things large, and make it so that I can really fit in as many apps and customize it the way that I want it to be customized. So I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of this interface, but you know, it might grow on me. And then down in the bottom, like I was talking about previously, you have all of your recently used apps, recently opened files. This is really like the timeline. Instead of having really just a bunch of information like you did under Windows 10, it doesn't really make sense also that you're trying to view different apps and then you go directly into all these different apps here. I believe the Windows 11 approach just makes it a bit simpler and you can really quickly get to different apps that you were working on previously. Kind of like actually how it worked back in the Windows 9 X days. And of course, if you press the all apps button, you can get to a list of all your different apps. And also on the recommended, you can view more of the files that you had opened previously, just so you don't have to go into Word, go into PowerPoint, whatever, to view your recently opened files. I also preferred having my apps list on the side here. And I also preferred being able to change the size of the start menu right from the start menu. I can make it basically full screen, whereas on Windows 11, that is not really possible. And if I go into the start menu settings, very quickly. You can enable the options to show your recently added apps or most used apps. And you can also add in different folders to start like you were able to do under Windows 10. I also like the implementation here where you can clearly view the files that you have pinned without having that hamburger menu on the side. I don't really know why you'd want to press a hamburger menu to be able to see the titles of these. Now going on the theme that a lot of the UI elements new in Windows 11 are kind of ported from Windows 10 X is the new out of box experience. That's what happens whenever you first install your computer. So when I was installing Windows 11, this is the interface that I got with a nice gradient following in with the UI elements who had the rounded corners and the rounded UWP buttons. Really clean selection boxes and also some really clean colors. I'm hoping they might also introduce some gradients in. Kind of also here when they were updating and first setting up the PC, they had a gradient animation that it played in the background. They also had a different 
font of the OOB, which I haven't really noticed in many portions of the operating system. But if you do go into the settings app here, you can see that that same font is used at the top here. It's a lot bolder and a lot wider than the font that they've used for many, many years. I hope that this means that they're planning to make a big change like that. I think that would just make the whole thing look a lot cleaner and a lot newer. And one final change that I really think is positive in Windows 11, if I put on my headphones here, is that they introduced brand new sounds. I believe most of them did come from Windows 10 X again, but if I play some of these for you, They honestly just feel a lot more modern, a lot smoother, and I think that it's going to give a lot more positive feel to the operating system. I really wish that I could show you the brand new startup sound here. Unfortunately, I don't have access to that, but I really think it sounds cool. And it's probably honestly one of my favorite startup sounds out of all the Windows operating systems. All right, so now that I've shared my opinions to some of the bigger changes on this Windows 11 build, now I'm actually going to go and show you some of the smaller changes that I noticed while using the system. So so the first thing on the desktop, when you hover over and click on items, it no longer does a blue highlight. It's only a nice gray highlight. It's also rounded. If you look very closely on the icon, instead of having that be a box with marching ants on it on Windows 10, instead it's rounded and I think it looks a lot cleaner, especially if you have multiple different apps selected. It's no longer blue and it no longer looks kind of outdated. Obviously also you have the rounded context menus. They do away with the outlines that these used to have. This used to have a white outline even on dark mode, which honestly looked very messy. I also believe that the highlight thing has not only been rounded on Windows 11, but the width has also been shortened. If I go into a regular Win32 dialog box, you can see that the buttons have been completely revamped. Now they're rounded and they also have a different color to them. It's still blue. I think it'd be better if they changed it maybe to the accent color of the operating system. And also if you look at the color scheme of this Win32 box, I believe it also also has been changed. It just looks a lot cleaner in my opinion. And I don't know if that's just placebo. This gray has been greatly reduced in the shade, which really works well with the light mode. And also, if you look here, this has a conventional scroll bar here on Windows 10, whereas on Windows 11, that scroll bar has also been revamped. It got a lot thinner, it got a lot more rounded, and the arrows here, they're a lot more interactive. They don't show up until you hover over them, and they also have a new look. It honestly looks a lot better, and this applies to all Win32 apps. On Notepad, if I show you the context menus here. The white shade here has definitely been changed. Lines between context menus has been greatly reduced and it also introduces a huge drop shadow. If I open up the about pane, you can see how much of a drop shadow it has, especially on the application that it's attached to. And also if I highlight over here on a light theme application, you can see that instead of having it be a blue highlight, it is only a gray highlight. That just really makes the whole system feel a lot more updated. Even if I go into like the sounds interface here, you can see that the check boxes have been updated, the boxes to select things are updated, the radio buttons look a lot different, and for every single interface, those shades of gray have also been changed. And you know, the more you use the system, the more you notice all the little things that Microsoft has added. For instance, if I were to minimize that, look at the edge. See how, see how it does a little bounce? Isn't that cool? Let's say I open up a new window in Notepad, now you can see an updated interface to show you all those different windows. You can see how it kind of stacks. Now what I'm going to do is download a Win32 application and just show you how these interface updates work on all applications, even ones you might not expect. You already have the brand new buttons. You have that really nice drop shadow for this context menu. Go through the interface. It all looks as you would expect it to. DLC Media Player keeps those same additions there. Looks very sharp, honestly. Ah, but one thing I I've noticed. This is the old gray. If your app publisher does something to really change up the menu, it does apply some of those changes. This really confirms that they have changed the gray in native Windows applications. As you can see, this is white. Whereas over here, it's kind of a dirty gray. And I honestly think the notepad one looks a whole lot better. All right, so those are the things that I like about this Windows 11 build. But now it's time to really hear me complain. The first thing is something that we've said all throughout Windows 10. It's UI inconsistency. And my God, Microsoft still hasn't figured it out. I really hope this is not what they're shipping. Just look at this. So they said they were going to be removing Windows 95 icons. Bam, look at those. This is directly from Windows 98 SE. Let's go in here. Okay, I already talked about this, but it's white. I'm obviously in dark mode. Why 
is this interface white? All right, let's change the icon. You know, got a legacy interface here. All of these Windows 9X icons still all throughout the operating system. That means the different applications can still be using them if they don't change the names of them. Also, look at this. The stupid file explorer is still here. We don't have tabs. This is literally the same file explorer that shipped in Windows 8. I don't know why Microsoft hasn't decided to update this. Got your legacy control panel. As you know, backup and restore is still Windows 7. You're six versions ahead already, but you know, you don't want to get confused with that. Also, if you look down here in the taskbar, if it didn't say Windows 11 right here, I think this is Windows 10. The icons are exactly the same. It's kind of rounded here on the context menus, but your volume control, exactly the same. System tray literally isn't even rounded. And of course, your calendar is also a direct port. This action center has been the bane of my existence since Windows 10 shipped. Although they did introduce some rounded corners here, it's still redundant. You can still click on network and have the task tray settings there. Doesn't really make much sense right now. I'm really hoping Microsoft is actually planning to refresh this and maybe bring in some of the Windows 10 X components on the system tray. And speaking about my gripes with the taskbar, when you right click on it, all you get are taskbar settings. Really all you can change is the alignment. People are all hyped about this being in the center. I don't like it in the center. But the problem is that this is not customizable at all. Gone is locking the taskbar. You can't change the taskbar to different sides of the screen. If I show you on Windows 10 here, I always like to go into my settings and be able to make it so that I don't hide my labels. I still prefer being able to see the entire name of my applications like you were able to do in the earlier versions of Windows. But that's all gone now, which I think is honestly a big shame. You can't literally even change the thickness. On Windows 10, if you were to unlock the taskbar, you can make this whatever thickness you want. But by default, it's set to this thing where it shows the date here and the spacing is not really correct. It's really up close to the center. Although they did introduce new tool tips here. It's in dark mode and it's also rounded. They are also inconsistent. Like I was pointing out here, how these are white, these are dark. And oh yeah, you want to change your disk, let's say. Oh, got a nice legacy Microsoft management console there. Straight out of Windows 2000. Let's go to our device manager, something everyone has to use. Yeah, this hasn't seen an update since Windows NT 3.51, has it? Let's say you want to, you know, join the insider program. Hmm. I'll get all the latest Windows 10 builds as soon as they're available. But what are the terms that we have to agree to? Oh my God, straight out of Windows 8. And it's still built into UWP, which is the modern application framework. They're literally trying to deal with legacy Win32 components and now legacy UWP components. Like it's just a disaster still. Like you'd think they would have figured this out, but no. Be the first to access the latest Windows 10 builds on the dev channel. You know, I want to get those Windows 10 builds. Let's do it. There we go. Legacy components for the win. Now, another UI component that is very inconsistent is the login UI of Windows 11. And this is, again, something that I believe is a direct port. We still have all the quick tips here on the start screen. It's still that pull-up screen. And this is literally the exact same interface as we have, including the boxy text input thing which is different from other UI components that we've seen in Windows 11. And of course, the final thing that I got a rant about are these stupid widgets. I don't know why they did this. So it's basically just news and interest, which is really your Bing homepage built into a bigger interface. So you want to move them to the desktop. All you get is a web link. And then let's say maybe you don't want top stories here. Let's see, how, how do you remove them? Oh yeah, you can't remove them. You can't even change the layout of this. Like I think that you can manage what interests you have. All these widgets are just a bunch of news stories. At least you can unpin it from the taskbar. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Like when I saw widgets, I was really excited about it. I was like, oh man, maybe we're going to have something, you know, like they did in the Vista days. Maybe I'll be able to put a clock or a liability monitor on the desktop. Hopefully again, that something that Microsoft is planning to, you know, polish up before they actually announce the real build. All right. So now that we're done with the review of the operating system, now I want to talk about some of the observations that I have made. One thing a lot of you might be worried about is app compatibility. I can't really say anything definite about this because I haven't tested it on my main computer. I have installed both Adobe Creative Cloud and VLC Media Player on this perfectly fine. It looks like it has all the same APIs that it needs. And it also looks like you're not having any app compatibility issues with the major build number, which would be Windows 11 versus 
versus Windows 10. The problem that might arise is that applications might be checking to see what the operating system name is. So let's say the application requires Windows 10, it might say if major build number or the name of Windows is 10, then it installs. If not, it doesn't install. But if it's checking the build number of the operating system, then it will be fine because it will be greater than a certain value like the Windows 8 RTM build. One thing interesting though, is that if I go to CMD quickly, and if you look at the Windows version right up top here, it says Microsoft Windows version 10.0.21966. This is the NT kernel version. Basically the thing that controls your operating system, this is the version of that. And if I were to go on to Windows 10 here, if you see here, the version is also 10.0 point and then whatever build you have of the operating system. So what this is really telling me is that the NT version has not changed at all. Really what Windows 11 is, is the same kernel as Windows 10 with a different UI and basically a rebrand. So that's really making me think that if we were to install an application, all it's really looking for is to see if this is 10.1 or if this is version 11 dot something, or to see if this integer right here is greater than a certain value. And that really kind of gives me hope, but it also makes me kind of apprehensive about whether or not this is actually what Microsoft is going to ship. Because normally when they go from a new operating system, they're going to increment that NT version because it's, it's a brand new operating system. It's a brand new kernel. So what I'm really starting to think is that Microsoft hasn't given us access to a lot of the low level features that they might have changed for the Windows 11 release. If you look back to different leaked builds, let's say the, the leaked build of Windows 10 in January 2015, although that showed resemblance to the changes that we were going to see in the operating system, it was incredibly far from what they were actually going to ship and from what they actually announced at their conferences. You might look at this start menu and think, hmm, this kind of looks similar. Well, yes, it does because Microsoft literally had a build of Windows 10 with this exact start menu, basically, that leaked back in July of 2020. Now, I do know that this ISO was compiled in May of 2021, meaning that it must be a new-ish version of Windows 11, but I really question whether or not this is actually what we're going to get. Microsoft has a bunch of teams that are working together on a bunch of different features. To say that this is the complete reverse integrated build of Windows with all the features in it, I think is a big overstatement. In the past, Microsoft had even used this thing where they locked down features that were shipped in Windows Insider builds and you had to use internal utilities to unlock those features. That could also be the case with this Windows 11 build. Although this gives us a good idea of what UI changes are going to look like, this shouldn't be known as the final version of Windows 11. This is definitely not what they're gonna ship in October, I know that. You know, just going over some things that people planned and I really think that Microsoft is going to be bringing. They're going to revamp the store. We could even see a store where developers can put their apps on there without having to pay any commission to Microsoft, meaning that apps like Adobe Creative Cloud could even be seen on the Microsoft store, which I think would be a very welcome change. We did even see Microsoft release the WinGet package manager, so we could see applications flowing into the store from that, giving a front end to that package manager so that you can quickly bring things from GitHub or repositories, so on and so forth. I'm also really thinking that Microsoft is going to bring better ARM support into Windows. I know that they already have a build of Windows 10 designed for ARM, but the problem with that build is that they only allow you to have an emulation layer between x86, 64 apps, x86 apps, and the ARM processor, which creates a lot of overhead and it makes it so that typical apps are formed really, really poorly. I'm really hoping Microsoft adapts an approach where they have a translation layer between between x86-64 and ARM-64, meaning that the instructions for each architecture is directly translated between applications. This is something that Apple has done with Rosetta 2, and we've seen on the M1 Max that it tends to work incredibly well, even for apps that haven't even been touched since the ARM processors have been released. And Microsoft has even developed layers like this in the past, and they even have provisions built directly into the NT kernel, where you can have different subsystems running right on Windows. So I'm hoping that Microsoft might introduce a subsystem for x86-64 running directly on ARM builds of Windows, which can make legacy applications a lot speedier and really, I think, increase the adoption of desktop ARM chips. We've even seen different subsystems that have worked really well, such as WoW, Windows on Windows, which made it so that you can run x86 applications on an x64 build of Windows. We still use x86 applications today, and they work perfectly fine without any performance 
performance hitches. So I really think that Microsoft has the potential to build something for ARM. They just really need to push themselves to do it. Now this is kind of getting into the speculation and the wishes territory, but I'm really hoping that Microsoft decides to decrepitate the Win32 API. So that's basically how apps like the Device Manager and VLC Media Player work. They use this really old API to tell them a button should work, how they should access System32, things like that. And Microsoft has replaced this with the Universal Windows platform, which is what apps like the Store and Spotify and all these different modern apps run on. This not only allows you to resize apps very well, but it also looks a lot more modern. It works very well with dark mode and light mode, and it is a lot more stable, and it just runs a lot better. Maybe these older Win32 applications can have a layer, just like I was talking about with Rosetta 2 and ARM, where they can be translated back into the Win32 API. I really don't think Microsoft is going to do something like that because we have seen all these improvements to Win32 apps in Windows 11. At least though, I hope that Microsoft removes all legacy Win32 components. We do not want this file manager anymore. We want something modern. We don't want the control panel. We don't want context panes to look like this when you're in a dark mode app. So I'm really hoping that's something they focus on before they ship the OS in October. Well, there we go, guys. I waited to make an in-depth video about Windows 11 because I really wanted to test it a lot and share all of my thoughts and feelings about the new changes and also some of my predictions about what can happen in the future. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Make sure to stay tuned on the channel because I will be covering the upcoming Microsoft event on June the 24th and I will also be covering more updates to Windows 11, especially as we get closer to the RTM and the gold media of the operating system. So that's it guys. Thank you all so much for watching this monster of a video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye.